I'm Dr. Dreema Hill. I'm the Vice President for Community Engagement and Development at the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine. And as part of my role here, I provide oversight for the Center for Rural and Community Health. And it's a great place to be, and I want to tell you a little bit about it. So I came to the school in the fall of 2016, and at that time, uh, the center had three employees and about $300,000 in its budget and was, uh, had just developed a relationship with the Greenbrier County Health Alliance, which is an important part of the work we do in our community. And so in the six years since I've been here, uh, we've built the center into a, there are 12 employees, and um, it is, uh, has a budget of about uh, 1.7 million uh, per year. And we, uh, we brought in enough over time, we actually built the center, a physical location for the center. It was a virtual center. And uh, so a couple of years ago, uh, we used indirect funds uh, that, from the grants that we brought in and we actually remodeled a section of the school and built a nice center um, so that the community could come and be a part of the osteopathic school. So it's a beautiful center and I hope you enjoy seeing it either in a virtual tour or in person. Um, and then the other important thing about the center is it is cost neutral. So the center brings in about twice what it takes to run the center. Uh, most of our um, employees are grant funded uh, positions, but they're pretty uh, sustainable programs, so we haven't lost anybody yet. So I want to talk a little bit about the programs uh, in the center and, and what the center is about. So what we do is we provide sustainable programming. Uh, and that's really important because a lot of times you get grants and you start a program and then the grant's gone and the program's gone. So we try our best not to do that, but to build an infrastructure that supports that program while it's here and while we have the funding for it, so it continues in our community and to, and to serve and help our community. So we, we've done a lot around substance use disorder and we've done a lot statewide around substance use disorder and, and opioid. And so, uh, you know, we developed the statewide toolkits for that uh, in every region of our state and in 10 of the hardest hit counties. And so we've, we've worked a lot statewide. So I think in the future for the center, we'll be looking at um, providing national models because we build a model here that we feel like would be replicable in a lot of rural communities across America. So our next focus over the next probably four or five years will be uh, taking a national look uh, at what we can do and how we can be a part of that national scene in, in rural and public health. And then we have a lot of great programs, but one of the ones I'm partial to is Fit Kids. And what I like about it is its impact for generations to come because the Fit Kids program, we go out in the community, we partner with parents and, and their children, and we teach them about exercise and nutrition and just healthy lifestyle in general. Um, and then we have our students go into the schools and they do um, coping uh, skills. They provide a, a training on how kids can cope with the things that are going to be coming up in their lives, but it's all age appropriate. And we, you know, we teach them about um, ways that they can avoid uh, falling into the trap of tobacco use and alcohol use and substance use. Uh, so hopefully we will build a, a healthier and a happier next generation. And then the greatest strength of the center when I think about that uh, it's the people. Uh, the people are incredible. We have the most dedicated team of professionals here. Uh, everybody cares about community, uh, cares about working with people. We go into communities and we don't go in and say, oh, here's your problem, let us fix it. We say, what do you see as your issues and how can we help you with that? And so we provide resources and we might, you know, partner with them to write a grant to, to help with whatever the issue is. And then, our partnerships. Our partnerships are really important to the center. We we partner with other nonprofits, with business, with other uh, uh, institutes of higher education across the state, and those partnerships are vital to the work that we do to be able to continue and to and to do what we do and make it meaningful. And I, then I'd say, last but not least, the support that we receive. President Nimitz here at the school, Jim Nimitz, he has been 
tremendous in uh, supporting our work with the community, understanding how important that is. The other leadership at the school, the other vice presidents and leadership uh, have really embraced the model of getting out into the community. And what we do is we connect our students then, our medical students, to the community in various ways so that when they are out into their private practice and their physicians, they can work better with people in rural communities and understand those communities better. The Center for Rural and Community Health is just a win-win for everybody. Hello, I am Barbara Holt, the Executive Director for the Center for Rural and Community Health. This department's goal is to work with community members to improve their health profile using evidence-based programs. To accomplish this, we have divided the center into four sections with a director over each section. One section is education and training with Jenna Hinkle as the director. Another is community engagement and outreach with Julian Levine as a director. Another is research with Yvonne Richards as the director. And another is administration with Joyce Martin as the director. Hi, I'm Jenna Hinkle, the Director of Education here at the WVSOM, Center for Rural and Community Health. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about our education and training segment here in the center. Um, so as far as our focus, when we talk about education and training, it's really ever changing based on um, the different grant programs that are coming in or what we have going on at the time. But overall, through all of our education, the goal is to um, improve the health and life of individuals and communities. So the best way I can describe the education and training here, you've probably heard the saying, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, feed him for life. And that's what we're trying to do with the programming that we offer. We wanna build that capacity in communities so that uh, people are equipped to help themselves and others and go out and make a difference in their community. As I mentioned, our training is very diverse. So just a couple examples of the current programming we have. We have our community health worker training program that's referred to as the community health education resource person or CHIRP. Uh, that is a great training for anybody in the community from uh, the lay person working in their church to a healthcare professional who wants to um, assist in their community further. Another training opportunity that we've done in the past is the NADA protocol, which is an acupuncture protocol. We've used this to train individuals around the state uh, to assist in combating the opioid epidemic. This is an adjunct treatment that individuals are then able to be certified in and offer to uh, group settings, such as in clinics or rehabilitation centers and that type of thing. So we really have a diverse list of the programming that we offer and as I mentioned we're always adding to it not usually subtracting we like to just continue to add to it so that we can offer that to the community so as you've heard with the other sectors here in the center we really work synergistically together uh, you know we offer this education and training that I'm talking about from there, these individuals are then ready to go out into their community, engage with their community, and be prepared to do so, have those skills, have that knowledge. Uh, from there, you know, that's when we can talk about the research aspect that we offer here. Uh, programs can be implemented, they can be evaluated. We can see what works in your community, what doesn't work in your community. Um, we could look at figures, data, for grant opportunities, or anything of that nature. So really, we just work very well together. We love the programming that we have going here, and we're really proud of the teamwork here. I am Julian Levine. I'm the Director of Community Engagement and Outreach here at the WVSOM Center for Rural and Community Health. So what do we do here in Community Engagement and Outreach? So, Community engagement actually has a working definition from the CDC, which is essentially working collaboratively with and through communities to address the challenges that affect those communities. 
So our goal is through this practice of community engagement, one, to impact rural community health at the grassroots level, um, and two, to develop long-term collaborations for community research. Practically, this means that we work with all sectors of our community, from the nonprofit to, to government to public health and healthcare, um, to develop collaborative and often grant-funded projects that advance the missions of WSOM, uh, our center, and our partners and funders uh, like WVCTSI. So in the next few years, um, you know, where do I see uh, CRCH and community engagement? In the last few years have been dominated by COVID. Um, but one of the few silver linings from this, from the pandemic overall, at least in our region, is how many organizations, including WSOM, came together to collaborate to protect the health of our community. So I think over the next few years, that tendency for collaboration is going to continue. Um, and at the CRCH, we're going to continue developing really exciting initiatives in health promotion and community research with our partners locally and statewide. Hello, I'm Yvonne Richards. I'm the Research Director for the Center for Rural and Community Health. There's an old adage that states, you can deal with what you know. And in a nutshell, that's what research does. It investigates the whys behind why health is not optimal, especially in some rural communities. By partnering with powerful partners like the West Virginia Clinical and Translational Science Institute, we bring research methods into communities and partner with various organizations, including other higher ed institutions to look into why some communities suffer more health, poor health outcomes than others. We also partner with our students locally and hope to impact the way that they practice medicine in the future by giving them lived experiences on the ground to show them why health disparities take place in the first place. Thank you. My name is Joyce Martin. I am the Administrative Director here in the Center for Rural and Community Health at the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine. My role enables me many opportunities to volunteer within the community and serve the community members through grants, contracts, special activities, events, and through our AmeriCorps program. By teaching our youth, it enables them to take responsibility and to make better choices for their own health and their community. Through programs that we offer, we focus on substance use prevention, mental health, fitness, health uh, choices, activities, um, and we have fun and games with the kids to keep them involved. Some of the programs that we offer is Fit Kids, and this program was developed by four of our second year students in 2021. And at each event that we offer, it encompasses a uh, variety of activities from fitness, uh, physical activity, fun and games, uh, healthy choices, and crafts and activities. Another program that we offer is the Nora Roberts Literacy Foundation uh, grant. We are going to be using this uh, program to uh, focus on career development for kids at Crichton Elementary over the next year. We will incorporate some volunteers and then the kids will be focusing on doing some programming um, through journaling and posters and helping them make a uh, lifestyle change or career choice that um, they choose to do. Um, we also have our AmeriCorps program and that is a program through High Rocks and we are able to uh, secure two members throughout the year and the members will be in Charleston and Lewisburg and by having the members, they are able to uh, help us with our programming and outreach services by doing service hours in the community. Uh, we also have a, another program uh, that was incorporated. It is Abracadabra. It is the children's uh, initiative, and we can take that program into the schools and into groups, and it teaches a variety of healthy choices, um, that children can make, and it is focused on elementary children.
All right, so this space here is the Klingman Center for Community Engagement. Um, as the name implies, this is a space that uh, WVSOM created to be uh, a space where the WSOM and the greater Green Bar Valley community can come and meet in a beautiful and, and neutral space in downtown Lewisburg. Um, the space has been open for a couple of years, mostly during COVID, um, but it's, it's been very useful in many different ways. We have a gorgeous demonstration garden outside where people from the community, uh, as well as WSOM students, come to, to learn about um, gardening and home gardening skills. We have a beautiful kitchen behind me that uh, is used for culinary medicine with the community and with students. Um, and we have the larger space, which has been used for self-management programs, chronic pain workshops with the community, and a variety of things. Um, WSOM wants this space to be um, for the community and, and utilized in a way that supports overall community health. So for that reason, the space is reservable uh, at a discounted rate for nonprofits in the Greenbrier Valley.